Today, we will discover the story of Chicago's waterworks. Throughout history, Chicago has been renowned for what's obvious, its towering skyscrapers. But have you ever considered the endless labyrinth of tunnels that lie beneath them? From the Pedway to the 60 miles of freight tunnel or the subway, I'd argue that subterranean Chicago engineering is mind-boggling. And there's more to the story, including the time when Chicago dug miles of tunnel under Lake Michigan itself to access the ominous water cribs, many of which are now abandoned. So from lifting the entire city to reversing the flow of the Chicago River, workers digging out the main channel removed 26 million cubic yards of glacial drift and 12 million cubic yards of solid rock, which was the largest earth-moving project in history at the time. The channel was constructed in three sections. Firstly, an earth section between Damon Avenue and Summit. Secondly, an earth and rock section between Summit and Willow Springs. And third, a rock section from Willow Springs to Lockport, with the rock section being 40% larger than the other two sections. Though it was scheduled for completion in 1896, the project would continue for another four years, as more time was needed to dig out the canal and throughout the duration, the lawsuits continued dragging on, with disputes between contractors and the sanitary district not accelerating the process. But by January the 2nd, 1900, the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal was completed, with the dams quietly opened to avoid backlash from litigating parties. From that day, the Chicago River began to flow southwards along to the Displains River. The operation was a success as immediately the death rate from typhoid and other waterborne illnesses dropped by 80%. Missouri attempted to get the U.S. Supreme Court to enjoin Illinois and the Sanitary District of Chicago from releasing their sewage into the new canal, but with little success. The canal was open and the waste would flow away from Chicago forever. With the rapid growth of Chicago, the single dam quickly became inadequate so the city would aggressively take measures to power their waterworks in the following decades. In 1907, a project to extend the main channel another four miles was completing, allowing for the creation of a water power plant. In 1909, the Willow Springs Spillway was completed, allowing for more water from the Displains River to flow into the main channel, which in turn increased productivity of the power plant. In 1910, creation of another canal the North Shore Channel was completed, flushing wastewater from north of the Chicago River down into the main channel. In 1922, yet another channel was built after 11 years of excavation, also sending the now reversed Calumet River into the main channel. This added more fresh water to the Chicago River, diluting the wastewater and adding yet more power to the plant. As all was now well for Chicagoans, neighbors were still seriously annoyed. So the sanitary district would hear from the Supreme Court once again. And this time, there was call for consequence. In the late 1920s, the court began the process of reducing the annual average net diversion from Lake Michigan, basically meaning that flushing your toilet into the river was no longer going to fly. This change was to be instituted over the course of eight years and forced Chicago to set up treatment plans for the recycling of wastewater. So in 1922, the Calumet Sewage Treatment Works began operations, followed by the North Side Water Works in 1928, the West Side Water Works in 1931, and the Southwest Works in 1939. As time went on, more plants were added to keep up with the region's growth. And by 1970, Chicago's wastewater treatment facility Facilities were the largest and most efficient in the world, and the inhabitants downriver were no longer burdened with dirty sewage. The 1970s saw the water cribs becoming increasingly obsolete and plagued with breakdowns, so it was clear that further action was needed. And almost as a finale to all those massive projects we've covered in this video, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago began the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan in 1972, a plan monumental to never-before-seen scales. 
This plan was drafted as a cost-efficient way to comply with both federal and state water quality standards throughout all 375 square miles of Chicago, as well as the 51 nearby suburb sewer area, with its primary goal being to protect Lake Michigan from sewage pollution. Basically, outlets for street and basement wastewater would lead into miles of cavernous tunnels, diverting sewage in the event of backup or flooding. This would have far-reaching ramifications with water quality beyond the lake to rivers and streams, TARP, as it's known, began tunnel construction in 1975 and entered into use in 1981. But this was only a baby step. The work ahead, and the work that is still ongoing to modern day, would be one of the largest civil engineering projects in the history of the world.